and use these 10 tips to your advantage. Let's be honest, I didn't see the point in a lot of it. That doesn't mean you need to be able to recite it, you just need to be able to understand it. This is going to be the difference between you getting your B or you getting your A, or you getting your A and you getting your A star. Mark scheme. I hate this mark scheme. <laughs> channel so today I have got the ultimate biology a level a survival guide this is going to get you through biology a level get you getting your A's and A stars and we're just going to smash this together everything you need to know about biology a level all in one place from my experiences and my top 10 tips and just how to get you through the next two years and getting those very top grades I wish I had a video like this so make sure you watch it till the end because all 10 of these tips are going to be crucial to you achieving your best and getting you through that biology content but also the dreaded mark scheme and if you are new then hi I am Anna there is something for everybody here on this channel and I would love if you would decide to stick around and subscribe we have everything medicine beauty vegan there's just a little bit of something for everyone and if you are not new then welcome back your support means so much to me now biology it probably was one of my hardest a levels I took biology chemistry and maths each of them had their own little challenges biology i have to say was probably one of the hardest it took up so much of my time because there is just a ridiculous amount of content believe me if you haven't started it already it just takes so long to get through the content but also even if you know it then it's not good enough the mark scheme is so specific it's ridiculous having it said that as hard as it was it was equally one of my favorite a-levels hence why I was applying to study at biology at university before I decided to do medicine it is such an interesting subject and if you have chosen it as an a-level and then congratulations because I think you have chosen one of the most interesting a-levels out there it's so applicable to day-to-day -day life you get to learn about the body but also ecosystems and you can just really see how your knowledge applies unlike maths and chemistry which let's be honest I didn't see the point in a lot of it biology there is a lot of point in learning this stuff and it is so interesting we just need to get our heads around how hard it is and use these 10 tips to your advantage tip number one is to prepare yourself for the fact that it's going to be a big step up from GCSE to A levels so if you are currently in your GCSEs and haven't started year 12 yet then just get your head around the fact that there are going to be a lot more concepts a lot more words to learn a lot more depth and it's just going to be overall harder they're not a levels for no reason there is a step up and saying that i think it is really important to make sure you do understand your gcse knowledge because you're going to use a lot of this when you get to your a levels and you want to make sure you understand those basic concepts before you jump into a levels so if you've been struggling a little bit with gcse's i think it is massively worth brushing over that over your summer just making sure basic concepts like diffusion osmosis you understand it really well so you're not so confused when you start at a level you're going to be building up enough knowledge that if you know your gcse stuff well then that is really going to help you i don't think it is impossible if you did get a c to be able to do at a level you're just going to really want to make sure you understand your gcse knowledge know where you're going wrong and kind of reevaluate a different way of learning the subject so a lot of these tips might help you out to come up with a better organization and revision techniques for biology tip number two is that you are going to have to consolidate as you go along there is so much content that you're not going to be able to cram it all towards the end i wrote all of my revision notes at the end for gcse you can't do that you need to write your revision notes as you go along so what i did if i had biology on that day i would make sure either in the free or at the end of the day i would go and write my revision notes i made a combination of my class notes and the textbook to create like a really condensed revision note set and i did that for every single topic and shoved it into this folder but i always wanted to make sure that by the end of the day all of my notes and revision resources for that lesson work done it can literally take me one hour to write my revision notes for one lesson because I want to make sure that as good as they can be you want to make sure you have 
all the details from the text and all the details from the class consolidated in a style that suits you. So at the time it was revision notes for me. However, what I've recently been looking at because I wanna make sure I have my revision techniques down to a T for when I start medicine is Ali Abdel's way of active recall. And that is to go out and write loads of questions. So instead of just rewriting and condensing your notes, you'd go out and write loads of questions and the answers on the other side. So you could do this like flashcards, you could also do it on a computer or on Quizlet. For example, the exchange in the capillaries, I've just written out what it is. You could say what are the main functions of exchange in the capillaries and then have the answer on the other side. This way you are actively getting out of your brain, you're testing yourself as you go along and I think this is a really great revision tip. It'd be much better having a really good set of questions which go over all the details you need to know but that way you are already testing yourself as you go along and you revise. Do whatever revision technique works best for you but just make sure you do it as you go along else it's gonna just seem a ridiculous amount to do at the end and to be honest with you you're not gonna be able to do it tip number three is with biology you need to stay organized that are gonna be so many little pieces of paper so many class notes what I used to do is I had big folders at home per teacher and that ended up being four folders because over the course of two years I had four different teachers but what I would have is a little day biology folder which was sectioned into my two teachers and I kept a chapter of each in that folder. So once that chapter was finished and we'd gone over it then I used to put that at my at home folder for that teacher and then start a new chapter in my day folder. That way I always had the notes I needed for each lesson. I could easily find the work. I could see what notes I needed to write. And it also meant that when I was writing my revision notes, I still had that whole chapter there with me. Another good tip is once you have written your revision resources, start a whole separate folder for revision resources because it's gonna get big. These were just my revision notes by the end of the two years. You wanna make sure you've got them in a really organized way that you understand, whether that's putting a context page at the front of your folder or color coding your notes or putting them in order of what you learned them. You need to get your revision vision resources organized as you go along because when you get to exams all you want to be focused on is just learning the content and practice papers which we will get onto later not organizing or writing your revision sources you literally don't have enough time tip number four is to read ahead on content so before every lesson I really like to just read ahead over what we would be learning in that lesson and I always use my CGP guide to read the topics just because they are less details but still go over the content in an easy way for you to understand. This just means that you've read the topic, you're not going to be hearing all the words first time and if there was one concept I found really hard I'd say spend like five to ten minutes just seeing if I could understand it a little better. Obviously you don't need to go and learn it before the lesson because your teacher is going to be going over it. It gives your brain some more time to get used to those concepts and you can really think about why you're not understanding it. Whereas in lessons they they might be going so fast that they've already gone ahead and you're still puzzling over why you don't understand this concept where you could have the question that they're ready and a bit of a better understanding going in. Tip number five is to make sure you understand, understand the concepts as you go along. Do not save it to your mock test or your real test or when you're advising. You need to know that you know them after the lesson. So if there's a concept that you don't understand, stay after the lesson and ask your teacher or ask whether you can see them at lunchtime or ask if you can see them after school. Or if you really don't want to do that, spend some extra time working out why you don't understand it. And if you still don't understand it, then you need to go and ask for help or ask a friend. But just make sure you nail the understanding. That doesn't mean you need to be able to recite it. You just need to be able to understand it. I always like to use the phrase, could I explain this to my sister or my parents? They have a minimal understanding of biology, so if I could explain it to them in a way they would understand, then I was confident that I understood the topic. And if I didn't, then I need to do some more work or go and ask a teacher. Number six is pass a paper questions are everything. You're not going to be able to pass biology without past paper questions. I'm really sorry. You might understand it. You might have learned it really well. You might be really confident in the topic. Then you do the questions and you get 20% of them right and you cry. I remember looking at some questions being like, I've learned this. I've got no idea what topic this is relevant for, but somehow it is. And you begin to learn. The more questions you do, the more you see where you have learned the information and what kind of thing you're supposed to be doing. Because at first you're like, 
I don't know what's going on, but you will get there. What I would recommend is at the end of every chapter, you have a bunch of past paper questions. I was really lucky that our teachers organized all the past paper questions into the topics. I also really recommend this website called Save My Exams, and they have loads of chunk of revision questions as well. To say this one is for hormonal communication and they have loads of practice papers just with questions in that subject it means that you can really focus on the topics at a time before you try and tackle a whole paper with loads of different topics and muddled in because that can just oh it's horrible it's not good enough to just do the questions and be like oh i went wrong oh dear no you really need to analyze where you are going wrong on these papers so once you do them and you get some questions wrong what i would recommend is either writing on the back the topics that you found hard and why you really need to analyze the mark scheme to make sure you know what they want and you understand where you're going wrong another good tip for this is i like to cut out the questions and stick them onto flashcards with the answers on the front or on the back and it means that then towards the exams you can just go over all of these questions make sure you understand the mark scheme and understand where to get your marks for those questions and also sometimes the same questions do come up there are common questions that will come up in a lot of papers and the more you do the past papers the more you start to see these common questions and the ones especially if you keep getting them wrong then stick them on a flashcard go over your flash flashcards you've got to get them right tip number seven is the mark schemes are evil they are honestly your worst enemy even if you write exactly the correct thing you explain it really well it sounds perfect you might open that mark scheme and they're not accepting it unless you say exactly the wording they want they're not going to accept it you need to get your head around these mark schemes when you're doing practice questions get the mark schemes understand the mark schemes exactly you can't just float around and be like all oh, this no you need to get it down to a t so the dreaded one if it's compare you need to say exactly what two things you're comparing so a and b you need to say A is this and B is this. You need to say exactly what A and B are. I was six marks away from an A star and all six marks I lost on one question. I got my paper back and me and my teacher went through it and it was because I didn't say exactly what I was comparing it to. I very clearly said the points about the two things but I didn't say the wording A is this and B is this. You literally need to get your wording so correct. It is such a faff and so annoying, but so important. This is gonna be the difference between you getting your B or you getting your A, or you getting your A and you getting your A star. It's your understanding of the mark scheme. You can't go over that mark scheme too many times. Tip number eight is don't neglect the maths. Now, I know you think you're doing biology, but there is a fair bit of maths in biology. So it did massively help me having taken maths as an A level. and. You you might be lucky enough or unlucky enough to have taken maths at two but if you haven't taken maths and even if you have you need to make sure you properly get your head around all of the maths and the equations in biology so i made myself this little booklet with all of the maths that i needed to know and all of the different t equations and you just want to make sure you do loads of practice questions but also just really learn the exact equations that you need for your course so things like the areas of spheres being able to confidently change your units that is so important to have to do really fast magnification work out the uncertainties you need to be confident with your means a medium and mode because if you understand it and if you have practiced it and get it then they are really easy marks to get i mean there are some complicated equations in there and i really struggled with a lot of them the good thing about them is the mark scheme can't catch you out if you get the right answer you get the right answer it's a number and there's no faffing around with this stupid mark scheme so make sure you you nail your maths don't neglect it and do focus some time towards revising it number nine you will not want to be hearing but that is the fact there is a big jump up between year 12 and year 13 the concepts get harder there's more content this suddenly is so complicated learning genetics took me forever to get my head around there just are some harder concepts with harder words and you want to make sure that you know your year 12 content so a lot of it will be built on from year 12 as well as being some new stuff so if you have year 12 mocks make sure you prepare for them get your revision resources working revise properly for them because you want this knowledge to go into your long-term memory so you're not having to learn it from scratch in year 13 if you do this and try and learn two years worth of content right at the end towards your actual a-level exams it's going to seem ridiculously overwhelming there's just going to be so much to learn 
and you're not going to know any of it. Whereas if you work hard for your year 12 marks or your test throughout year 12, then that means it's going to go into your long term memory and be a lot easier to revise, not trying to cram it trying to cram it is just not going to work what you want to do by the end is have it in your memory but being focusing on the application side and getting your head around the mark schemes and the papers not cramming a load of knowledge into your brain number 10 is please try to steal it in enjoy it as much as the mark schemes are a faff and the papers are horrible and there were a lot of tears shed over biology it is such an interesting subject and if you try and enjoy it and find it interesting then it becomes so much easier and less of a burden to have to spend all this time revising it think about how applicable it is to the whole world genetics the future how biology is going to help the human race there are some really amazing concepts and it is really interesting so just try to love the subject and remember why you picked it and focus on that rather than mark scheme I hate this mark scheme. You really want to make sure you still bring it to life and enjoy it. So those are all of my tips. I really hope you have found them useful. Biology is by no means this easy science that everyone says. I've got so many people that picked it just because they thought it was an easy science and they wanted to have a science A level and they ended up struggling so much. And even friends that I have that took three sciences often were so worried about biology because of the amount of content, but also the mark schemes and how hard it is to actually apply your knowledge. Try to use all 10 of these tips and I know you'll be fine. I have all faith in you. Just keep on top of your content. Practice applying your knowledge. Practice papers and mark schemes are key to your success and for you absolutely smashing biology which I know you are all capable of. If you did find today's video helpful it would mean so much if you would give it a big thumbs up and subscribe and let me know if you want a survival guide for any of my other A levels that I took. I would love to help you out in any way and I will see you all so soon everybody. Bye!